Despite Marilyn Manson's career not being what it was, or at the very least, surrounded by controversy, the artist did save up over the years to afford some nice places to live. Manson sold his longtime Hollywood Hills property at the end of 2021 for $1.8 million, which was a vintage 1920s Spanish villa style abode with three levels. And then more recently, snagged a new home at the end of 2022 in the Glendale area of Los Angeles. Manson's new mid-century style crib was built in the 60s and updated since, but it sounds like a feature that grabbed this rocker's attention would have been the detached garage, which was transformed into a top-of-the-line professional recording studio. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. While singer and songwriter Marilyn Manson might not be doing stellar in the career department at the moment, he's a far cry from broke. After selling his longtime Hollywood Hills residence at the end of 2021, he recently purchased a stunning contemporary home in the Glendale area of LA for $2.2 million. The heavy metal star's new crib is secluded down a private street in the foothills of Glendale and set on top of a small hill and behind a long driveway, making the property seem far from the busy city. Inside the home, which was built in the 1960s and recently restored, there's just a bit more than 2,000 square feet of space along with four beds and three baths across two floors. Manson snagged the mid-century style home off of songwriter Jeremy Ruzumna who only lived there for about a year himself. Within that time frame, however, the former owner was able to make a handful of updates to the property, including adding the recording studio. This was likely a highlight that attracted Manson, being a musician himself, and it's quite the recording studio at that. What was once a detached two-car garage is now a spacious and professional recording studio, complete with soundproof walls. Going up to the main house, a steep staircase leads to the front doors, which open up into the double height entryway, which has soaring ceilings, but is quite narrow. At one end of the front hall, there's the living room, which is flooded with natural light thanks to all of the windows, as well as bonuses like hardwood flooring and a lava rock fireplace. The home offers plenty of open concept and modern lounging and dining areas, as well as a wooden balcony off of the house that is perfect to dine al fresco. Over in Manson's new kitchen, it's been fully renovated and upgraded, now boasting upscale Viking appliances, a custom quartz waterfall island with bar-style seating, and more. All bedrooms, including Manson's master suite, can be found on the upper level of the home, and each bedroom provides views of the surrounding trees via large windows. Not to mention, at least one of the bedrooms offers their own attached bath, which is likely the singer's new master suite. The home is essentially wrapped in stunning oak trees that are on the property, giving the place a treehouse-like feeling. There are also multiple wooden patios and terraces extending off of the home that brings you closer to the forest and greenery, while there's also a patch of grassy lawn. There's no pool here, but Manson does have his nifty new recording studio with the soundproof walls. In November 2021, Manson offloaded his longtime Spanish villa style home in the Hollywood Hills for the price of $1.75 million. The home sale came after the shock rocker was accused in early 2021 by ex girlfriend Evan Rachel Wood of sexual abuse during their relationship. At that time, cops swarmed this very home after a friend called and requested a wellness check on Manson. Manson lived in this vintage Spanish style villa since 2013 when he picked it up for just less than $1.1 million. The 1920s era a home is secluded up in the Hollywood Hills and set on a 0.16 acre lot with plenty of privacy. Inside, his former home spans 2,711 square feet along with three beds and three baths throughout. Manson had moved all of his personal belongings and decor out of the residence before it was staged to sell, but we can get a pretty good idea of what it was formerly designed like. The vintage crib still kept the blood red velvet curtains that gore obsessed Manson had installed, which hung over the massive arched window in the great room. This room had cavernous wood beam ceilings that towered 20 feet, as well as plenty of room to lounge and dramatic glass doors leading out to a garden terrace. The second story of the home has a wide full-length open hallway and balcony that can function as an office or sitting area overlooking the main living area. The separate dining room was spacious and offered a barrel vaulted ceiling and even its own cozy lounge area, while the modestly sized kitchen had been recently updated and decked out in black and blue cabinets, stainless steel appliances, and a breakfast nook. 
Here, you'll also discover a corkscrew style staircase that curls down to a lower level guest suite with outdoor entrance. Other features of Manson's former crib include a library loft that overlooks the living room with a blood red velvet reading banquette. This space led to two of the ensuite bedrooms, one of which had its own morning bar, while the other boasted a dramatic attached bath colored in shades of black and gray, as well as dreamy wallpaper depicting clouds. In fact, Manson's home was said to have two separate master suites with original tiled bathrooms, vanities, and walk-in closets. However, while Manson lived here, we have reason to believe that his decor was a bit darker than it appears now. According to a 2015 interview with Rolling Stone, they called him the Vampire of the Hollywood Hills and said that he does keep his home pretty dark. Not to mention, he has decorations like a pistol and a rifle on a coffee table, a prized clown painting done by rapist and serial killer John Wayne Gacy. Manson's Hollywood Villa also boasted that separate bonus bedroom and bath with private entrance and a large storage room, while the home itself is situated on two parcels of land with private fenced-in gardens and gorgeous views of the canyon hillside. The grounds of the home include a flagstone patio and fenced-in concrete terrace, which could be used for dining, lounging, or entertaining outdoors. According to listing materials, the two-car garage on the property has been converted to what was described as a flexible space ideal for a gym, recording studio, or home office. It might seem that Manson's home was normal as can be, but there was a bit of a rumor that his place was haunted. It was reported that before Manson's album, The Pale Emperor, he bought a haunted home to write the record in. Considering this Hollywood spot was sold just before that, it makes sense that it's the same place. He's also neighbors with his buddy Johnny Depp here. I could hear whispering or talking, and at first I thought it was my friend and it was very scary. Apparently the home was once owned by a silent film actress from the 1920s and the property is at least 19th century. Manson told Revolver magazine, I needed a place that didn't have any distractions so I bought a house that was next to one of Johnny Depp's houses. I bought it the day before I started work on The Pale Emperor. It's haunted. Doors slam behind me a lot and I'm always hearing people walking up and down the stairs. Well, that fact is yet to be confirmed, but until then, I'd say we got a pretty good look at Marilyn Manson's properties, including his latest purchase in Glendale. After checking out Manson's homes, what did you think? As dark and creepy as you would expect or not even close? Before we wrap up this house tour, answer this question for me. Would you prefer an old world house with some charm and history, even if it could possibly be haunted? Or would you prefer a newly built, modern style home? Let me know what you're choosing in the comments down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications. My name is Kira the Vampire Slayer. Follow me on Instagram to chat, and I'll see you all in another video. Bye.